How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Deep End. My name is Brendan, and I appreciate you joining us for our fourth volume of the Outer Banks Shipwreck series. Today, we're going to be going over the Oriental Shipwreck at Pea Island. Uh, the Oriental was a 200-foot steel hold uh, steamship built for the New Avitas and Cuban Steamship Company, which during the Civil War in 1861, it was actually rented to the U.S. Navy for about $1,000, which nowadays is about $25,000, which isn't cheap. Um, it was converted into a sort of cargo and troop carrier ship at the time. Um, on May 15th, it was in New York ports heading for Port Royal in South Carolina on the next day. And while they were in the ports, they actually recalibrated the compass due to it being a steel hull ship and the magnetic interference that could happen throughout the transport or prior to it actually arriving to the ports. Uh, the captain at the time was not very confident in this and felt like it might affect him in the future, but they went ahead, recalibrated the compass, and head south to Port Royal. Now, on the night of May 16th, about 11.55 p.m., they, they don't know if it was the, re, the recalibrated compass that caused this issue or the possible captain asleep at the wheel, but the Oriental came to a halt off the, uh, off the coast of Pea Island uh, Visitor Center, which then was just Pea Island. Um, came to a halt, it was stuck there, um, actually dumped a lot of supplies off, hay, food, um, munition, and a whole bunch of other things to hopefully lighten the load and be able to lift off, in which they were unable to. Uh, luckily, everyone was able to be loaded off the ship, no lives were lost, because currently at the time, the Union controlled um, Overcoke and Hatter's Village, so luckily there was no uh, contact with the southern states at that time, or the southern control states. Um, what you see now is just the top of the uh, top of the steamship, the, the engine sticking out of the water. It sticks about like five to six feet out of the water. It can be seen at all times during the day, all tides. Um, the only issue with this wreck is is the visibility with the current and it being next to Oregon Inlet. You know, it's pretty dirty water around the majority of the time when we've tried to go spearfish there. But some days we've gotten some three foot, three to four foot visibility and we're still able to get some fish. Some other names for the Oriental Wreck are the Boiler Wreck or also known as the Stovepipe Hat Wreck. I guess back in the 1860s they wore stovepipe hats and the engine sticking out of the top of the water resembled a stovepipe hat. That. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some videos and photos of the Oriental Wreck. I hope you enjoy all of that, and I will see you guys at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed the history you learned today, um, the videos and photos that we got to share with you guys. If you're not already following us on our Facebook or Instagram, our social links are below. I did share a couple days prior to this video going out what shipwreck we were going into. Uh, I didn't say what it was, but it was just sort of like a little teaser to see if everyone could guess what was next. Um, but yeah, if you guys liked the video, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, and I'll see you guys in the next one.